reading this morning is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 29 through 40. The next day he, John, saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me baptizing to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified to this. Our reading this morning is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 29 through 40. The next day he, John, saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Chosen One. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translates teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. May we be, all be blessed by the hearing and understanding of the word this morning. In this morning's reading, we heard John the Baptist identify Jesus as the Lamb of God, the person God sent ahead of him to prepare his way through baptism by water for repentance. Because at his baptism, John saw the dove descending and remaining upon Jesus, he identified him as God's Messiah, the one who would baptize with the Holy Spirit. When John identified Jesus as the Lamb of God to two of his disciples, they understandably followed Jesus to learn more about him. One was Andrew, the brother of Simon, who brought him to see the Messiah. And as a result, they both became Jesus' disciples, and Jesus renamed Simon Cephas, meaning Peter, which is the reason Simon was called Peter, the rock on whom Jesus would build his church. Through the years, many other leaders have been drawn to follow Jesus and have had their lives changed and then went on to change the lives of others. Tomorrow we will celebrate the birthday of one such leader of the church, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Reverend King Duncan tells us that two months before his assassination, Dr. King spoke to his congregation at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta about his death in what surprisingly would become his eulogy. Every now and then I think about my own death, and I think about my own funeral, Dr. King told his congregation. If any of you around when I have to meet my day, I don't want a long funeral. And if you get someone to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to take too long. Now, every now and then, I wonder what I want them to say. Tell them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That isn't important. Tell them not to mention that I have three or four hundred other awards. That's not important either. I'd like someone to mention that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I'd like someone to say that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to love someone. And I want you to be able to say that day that I did try to feed the hungry. And I want you to be able to say that day that I did try in my life to close those who were naked. I want you to be able to say that I did try to visit those in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Dr. King concluded with these words, I won't have any money left behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind, but I just want to leave a committed life behind. Did Dr. King have that level of commitment when he first began his ministry? It's doubtful. 
He had youthful enthusiasm, to be sure, and he had strong convictions. He was well brought up with an outstanding Baptist preacher as a father, but people who are truly captured by the Spirit of Christ do so generally after years of walking in Christ's footsteps. Our faith is validated and grows as we come and see the Messiah and are changed by him. We all know the story of Dr. King, how, like Jesus, he would give his life to change the lives of the poor, suffering, and oppressed people. And like Jesus, Dr. King's life was taken by insecure people of power who didn't want someone going around changing the power dynamic of their society to their detriment. And both times that attempt to stop the spirit-filled work of God's chosen leader failed and the world was changed for the better. Both Jesus and Dr. King gathered followers who would continue to carry out their work in the world. When Andrew started to follow Jesus, Jesus asked him what he was looking for. Andrew asked where he was staying and Jesus said, come and see. He didn't tell him he was staying at Joseph's house or at the inn. He said, come and see an invitation to come and experience some of what Jesus was doing. And that experience led Andrew to invite his brother Simon to come and experience the Messiah for himself. Hearing the witness of John the Baptist led to action by his disciples, which led to another witness and another action. And Jesus' ministry was off and running. And he hadn't done much more than be baptized and then recognized. Hearing something can draw our attention and pique our interest, but putting that interest into action is what can start to accomplish things. As more and more people experienced the ministries of Jesus the Messiah, more and more people were drawn to follow him, learning from him so that they too could go out and minister like him on their own bringing the kingdom of God near to those they encountered. Simon Peter went on to become the leader of the Jewish Christian movement and the first Pope of Rome. His ministries attracted many others to follow in his footsteps, to follow Christ Jesus, the Messiah. Like Simon Peter, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was also drawn to learn and experience the ways of the Messiah and to follow him also. And Dr. King also drew many people to follow him to accomplish many things in the interests of racial equality. He won international acclaim for his actions, but wasn't really impressed with any of the awards that he'd won because he wasn't trying to win any awards. He wanted to be remembered for the things he had done as a follower of Jesus that he tried to love somebody, that he tried to feed the hungry, he tried to clothe those who are naked, and he did visit those in prison and was imprisoned himself, like the other disciples after Jesus' death. And he tried to love and serve humanity as Jesus had. And I would say that he succeeded as well as any disciple of Jesus ever right down to laying down his life for his fellow men and women in fighting against the evils of oppression. Like Jesus, Dr. King was not just a, a great and inspirational speaker, he was a great and inspirational doer. And each one in his own way brought the kingdom of God closer to earth by freeing the captives, healing the sick, and feeding the hungry. Great men and women inspire other great men and women. Jesus had his core group of 12 among a group of hundreds of followers. And Dr. King also drew leaders and followers to his movement and inspired leaders yet to come, like a young Barack Obama. The actions of our lives ripple outward like waves on a pond, moving and affecting those that encounter them. And we often have no idea 
what the broader effects of those actions have down the chain of our lives and the lives of others. But no deed of love or service is ever wasted, for it is in continuing the work of Jesus Christ to bring the kingdom of God a little closer. We too can help feed the hungry and bring a little respect into the lives of those who too often are disrespected. For all people are children of God and worthy of the respect due to Jesus' brothers and sisters, just be our, because they are children of God, just like we are, and Jesus was, and Dr. King was. Let us keep that in mind every day, that we are surrounded by other children of God who find themselves in different circumstances than our own for no fault of their own. We're not called to judge or criticize. We're called to love, like Jesus loved, to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We have been called to come and see and experience the Messiah in our lives, and then to share the good news with others to help build up God's kingdom. Thanks be to God who invites us to share in the life and worth of the Messiah and who considers us worthy to be in relationship with him through the Spirit and the fellowship of believers in his body here on earth, the Church. May we all see and experience and witness to the grace and goodness of the Messiah in our lives. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our church is sustained through this wilderness time by your faithful generosity. You can continue to send your offerings by mail, or for more information about setting up an electronic funds transfer, contact Roberta Kent or Pastor Odney.
we go forth into the world this week, may we remember our baptisms and live into them, following the example of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, who we have come to see and know. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. Amen.